You guys mentioned room geometry, and we were talking about this is just good for rectangular rooms, but most people in here probably know about using the room geometry and the angling of the walls and things of that nature. So how do you, like I've got a space that's 18 and a half by 25 by eight feet tall. Would it be better just to go with that or should I build an angled wall in there? I think that if you're gonna get into geometry and you don't have a lot of experience that you might be, just might wanna consult with somebody about what you're doing. Cause it does get a little bit- um, it gets a lot more complicated. So that's my fixed Space. Yeah, and then yeah. it is much easier to treat that room afterwards if you find out that oh, 60 hertz is like ringing forever. It's much easier to treat that than if you have started to introduce geometry in a room. Yeah, okay. So it is a very simple you can and control, easy you can way control of your reflections. with a rectangle. These first re reflections that we were hoping to demonstrate controlling today <laughs> is hopeless. Um, <laughs> You know, you can control these in a rectangular room very easily. If, assuming you're not going to build speakers into a wall, which I mean, assuming you're not, you know, that kind of dictates that you're going to have a non-rectangular room. As soon as you start to build speakers into the wall, now you've got two walls that are angled, no longer a rectangle, right? So it gets... And side, you know, side wall geometry and all that, I mean, it really does get to where it's very complicated. You're, you're manipulating energy. You better know what you're doing. And we're it, not trying to be cagey about this. There's no, no, no simple answer. But see, the, the problem is when you do stick with rectangular geometry, rect parallel surfaces, then you've got more parallel surfaces with flutter echoes, and you tend to, it's easy to over dead in the room. It is. That's why we do some of this flaring is to redirect reflections <coughs> without having to absorb them. Sure. So you can keep more natural decay times at higher, mid, and higher frequencies. So we're trying to get those low frequency decay times down to reasonable without killing the mid and upper frequencies. Okay, we want a fairly smooth decay time across the, the spectrum. This uh, this type of uh, of analysis is useful up to um, you can go up to about a two degree angle in the walls, t t canting the walls, and it's still it's still very overlays very nicely. What you can do, I mean, you know, there is a benefit to doing different kind of designs, both aesthetically and and functionally for performance, and you want to do different things. So it's always good to do to just run um, run what you can and learn what you can about about the volume that you're working with um, because you could compare if your room is ultimately going to be shaped a little bit different but it's effectively you know if you looked at an average of a certain length by height by width you can get a characteristic of what what to expect the problems might be it it just gets harder to predict we we know what a shoebox does all from 20 to 20K, we know exactly what it's going to do. It's just easy to predict how to correct it. When we get into multi-sided rooms beyond parallel <coughs> rectangular shapes, we end up doing these calculations on multiple iterations of what the minimum, maximum, average, mm -hmm. mean dimensions are. And it just gets hairy because you can't get them all right. So we have to use our intuition to tell us that which ones are problematic and which problems that the simulations show are not problematic. And there is no... It really is, it's an experience thing. It's like seeing, having built, you know, a couple of hundred rooms that do have angled walls, now I know what what predictions we made came true and what predictions we made were not so true. So it's empirical. That's what it comes down to. We're sort to. of like a program. We keep we keep repeating <laughs> these things until we get it right. And honestly, what you've got, you know, between, you've got probably three, four thousand rooms. Thousands between on this panel and and uh so it's, there's real no easy really no easy answer to that question other than become a studio designer and go crazy with the rest of us we welcome you <laughs> and also these numbers you know things that are bounced between several walls they will have traveled longer distance so the significant of the le significance of the level will be less That's right. and all these things we have to juggle around till we find a good solution so some of them aren't important, and you know if it's the direct ones, they are significant, and we have to deal with them. Anything and also else? in the higher up in frequency, 100, 200 hertz, it's very too easy to deal with them with you know corner absorbers and stuff like that. It's very easy to get rid of. Is that it? Lunchtime. <laughs> thanks for thanks, thanks for hanging, for coming. everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.